Mm -hmm. Hey there, folks. I am the Mighty Plantain. Thanks for checking out this video. <sighs> we got something from Baxter tonight. Baxter Brewing in Maine. Um, this is Bootleg Fireworks. It's a triple IPA at 11% ABV. DOT Class A, Hoppy Eruption, Warning Supercharged. Now, I swear there's other beers out there called Bootleg Fireworks. I don't even think this is the only Bootleg Fireworks name. <laughs> I don't even think this is the only beer named Bootleg Fireworks that's made by a main brewery, honestly. So that's a little odd. Can't care, packed in Lewiston, who dis distinctly Maine. Yeah, Lewiston is distinctly Maine. The Dirty Lou. Pack it in, pack it out. Please drink responsibly. Pack it in, pack it out is a camping thing, guys. It's not anything else. It's about, you know, take out what you brought in. Don't leave your fucking trash behind. It's kind of just common sense, but, you know, we have to have a logo for it. Okay, uh, Bootleg Fireworks Triple India Pale Ale, our bombastic triple IPA is bursting with the aroma of classic American IPA hops and a blast of new Australian hop varietals. Bootleg is here to detonate your taste buds. Don't be fooled by the light, crisp malt profile. This triple IPA is far from balanced. It's all about the hops. Warning, do not drink and operate fireworks well. Sad that you have to put that warning on things, but we've had some incidents in the state. <clears throat> Tell you something, yeah, drinking and fireworks do not mix. I mean, you're basically screwing around with an explosive device that could kill you. I mean, you wouldn't drink and handle firearms, would you? Maybe some of you would. If you would, then get the fuck off my channel, please, because that's not cool. Um, but yeah, you wouldn't drink and handle firearms. Why would you drink and handle fireworks? They can kill you or somebody else just as easily. Anyway. Damn, that is orange. Slightly hazy. Orangish. Well, maybe a little more than slightly hazy. It's pretty damn hazy when it gets up here. Um, I'm guessing that that's particulates because when you look down at the bottom, it's almost like this lava lamp type effect of what I assume are hob oils and maybe some particulates considering I'm seeing a couple of larger flecks in there. <coughs> Pardon. Swirling around, it's... Burp. Ooh, excuse me. Slightly mesmerizing. And although there's not a lot of bubbles... Coming up, I did get a decent head on that at first without trying too hard, so it is somewhat effervescent. And as I was pouring it out, I could smell just this burst of juicy, hoppy aroma. No particular esters coming forth, but... It's oddly bready. Hmm. The aroma is bready and slightly yeasty, but just a general overall hoppy bitterness as well. It's interesting. I'm almost getting like a saltine cracker aroma, followed by a punch of general hoppy bitterness. Hmm. Fucking saltines. Who would have thought? All right, here we go. Damn. Um. Wow. I think that says it all right there. Um. I'm gonna try to distill this, but it's triple IPA. At 11% ABV, it does not taste like it's 11% ABV. Uh, even without the hoppy punch to cover it, 
up. This beer does not taste boozy at all, which is very special for a double digit ABV beer. Um, they talk about the lightly malty profile, but what I'm getting is still some of that breadiness, which for me makes me wonder if there's some sort of Kolsch or um, what's the other bready variety? Some sort of element that's, that's tying into that in the malt profile. Um, it could also be some of the the yeast that goes into the brewing but possibly even um, grassy earthy or floral believe it or not hop esters that are making it taste bready it's got some pretty good body to it but not like overwhelmingly heavy it's got a bit of a medium medium to medium you know what i'm gonna stick with medium i'm gonna say medium mouthfeel it's not quite heavy enough to get it medium heavy which again for a triple ipa is something because even with a lot of hops in there and the hop oils it would pick up some viscosity but we're dealing with about a medium mouthfeel. Again, not overwhelmingly hoppy. It's bready, and the breadiness kind of lends itself to a bit of grassy, dank, um, grassy and dank, and maybe a bit of earthy flavor. I'm not I'm not really getting much in the way of citrus and pine, which is unusual for me. Yes, I know, for those of you who watch these videos every couple of, twice a week or whatever, I was gonna say every couple of weeks, but every time I post it was overlapping in my brain with every week, <laughs> a couple of times a week, see? So I misspoke there. Um, Anyway, for those of you who watch these videos on a regular basis, you know, citrus and pine are the two hop esters I'm mostly keyed towards. And if I'm not picking up on those, then that's kind of got my attention to begin with. But just, wow. I mean, there might be hints of citrus and pine in there. But overall, that it's bready and slightly yeasty with earthy and dank, but slightly floral notes. Maybe, maybe some pine and citrus, but it is just good. It's weird. I mean, a triple IPA, you would expect it to be cloyingly hoppy, but it's not. And also, it doesn't have huge notes of the hop esters that I'm mostly keyed towards. It's got the others in there that are mostly, they're full forward. Um, at 11% ABV, you would expect it to be pretty boozy or at least be able to tell that it's heavily boozy, but somehow every element of this beer seems to be tied in well enough that it's it's definitely a punch of hops, but not the esters I'm used to. It's got some breadiness, which speaks to the malt profile but it's not overwhelmingly malty either. And then the booziness is just not there. So somehow all of the different elements that should make this unpleasant are not making it unpleasant in any way, shape or form. And it's just overall smooth, easy drinking and delicious. 
which for a triple IPA at 11% ABV, and I know I keep repeating those statistics, but the fact of the matter is that this is so smooth and easy to drink that you would never guess that it's either of those things. And I got to say that that's right there. The, the initial wow reaction combined with all of those things that I've mentioned means that this is a full on five out of five for me. I mean, bootleg fireworks are fucking dangerous as hell. Bootleg fireworks, the beer is definitely dangerous as hell because looking at it, you would think that it's trouble, but once you start drinking it, you realize that it's actually pretty much smooth sailing until you pull the second one out. Then it's going to blow your fucking face off. So yeah, um, bootleg fireworks are dangerous, no matter whether you're talking about the beer or the the actual fucking thing. Um, pull on five out of five. Now I'm starting to get citrusy notes, so that's kind of cool. But anyway, that's pretty much all I've got to say about it. Hit me up down below in the comments or the email link. <coughs> Pardon? Love to hear what you have to say about this beer. While you're down there, don't forget to like and share the video. <laughs> Excuse me. Burps are going to start coming more fast and furious now. Um, once you're subscribed, make sure to click on that notification icon so that you get a notification. Get a notification every time I post a new video. <laughs> starting to catch up with me now, isn't it? <clears throat>